All right, so the question was, uh, what do you do in the nightmare scenario where you bought a house, someone rented it out, and then they stopped paying? Okay, so this is kind of the risk side of real estate. Uh, it makes for a great return. This is why I recommend not stopping at your first property. You really want to get to the point where you're building up. Because like for me right now, with 22 units, if one tenant stops paying, it's like 4 to 5% that I'm losing out on at any one time. So it's manageable because I can use the other properties, kind of smooth everything over, and keep the bills paid. But when you're first starting and you just have your first property, you're going to run into issues like this, you know, maybe 1% of the time. So it may not ever happen to you. But if it does, this is why you have to have some sort of... Um, emergency fund because here's the thing you're going to have to make a payment here in california it could take you three to six months to um, evict someone so you start the process could be three to six months the eviction is going to cost you a thousand to fifteen hundred dollars probably and then you have to get the property back and then you might have to do repairs so it could get expensive if you're paying a fifteen hundred dollar mortgage you know, over six months, that's nine thousand dollars plus fifteen hundred dollars to get them out. You know, now you're at ten fifty. Let's say, best case scenario, it's five grand with paint and maybe some carpet. So, you know, you're really at fifteen grand to get these people out. That would be pretty discouraging. I could see. Unfortunately, that's one risk you take. Um, this is why it's super important to screen tenants. Um, I'm a big fan of the Burr model, which for those of you that don't know is buy, rehab, rent, refinance, and repeat. Um, and there's a few reasons I like that. One, you're doing major rehab when you buy it, and that makes it so that you don't have issues with like plumbing and electrical. So that that way, hopefully, you know, and you're putting like the good high quality floor in. So hopefully there's not a lot of work to do. The tenants haven't really destroyed it because you put high quality product in there. I'm not talking about high end finishes necessarily, but just high quality, heavy duty, uh, durable materials so that that lowers the risk of things being broken and things needing to get fixed. And another key with the Burr model is you're able to refinance and take some or all of your cash out. So let's say you put $50,000 into the property and you're able to get a high enough valuation where you could pull all 50,000 out would be a lot better if someone moved out and you had that fifty thousand in your pocket than fifty thousand locked up in the property. So um, that's kind of my thought about it. You really want to stay with a certain amount of liquidity just in case these things happen. Having twenty or thirty thousand dollars in your bank is not a bad idea when you're getting started for sure. So I hope that helps. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, go ahead and comment down below. Like and subscribe, and I'll catch you on the next one.